Hello everyone, welcome back to Explore Electronics. Uh, today let's discuss model question paper on problem solving through programming. So let's begin with model question paper 1. So the first question asked here is, describe the evolution of computers by mentioning how computers in one generation are better than their predecessors. So while answering this question, make sure that you put at least 5 points to each of this generation of computers so that it will give the clear uh, differences between the each generation. So make sure to highlight the points that are specific to that generation. So for example, we in the first generation we have uh, vacuum tubes for circuitry and magnetic drums for memory. So make sure the main points for this first generation computers you put all of them. So uh, minimum 5 points to each generation would be enough. So make sure you give some examples also for each generation as you can see for the first generation some of the examples is ENIAC or ENIAC and also for second generation you can mention the important points that differentiates this generation computers from the first generation computers. So as in question they have clearly asked how computers in one generation are better than their predecessors. So in your answer make sure the points that you write for each generation it will say the difference that makes the, that generation better than the previous generation. Now here is a question which asks to define bit, nibble, byte, word and kilobyte. So referring this table it's very easy for you to remember this. Say nibble is nothing but 4 bits. We all know what is a bit right. So bit is the rep representation of data by states 1 or 0. So each of the state we need if we need to represent this 1 or 0 we need a bit. So we, you, can, you can just write the brief explanation of all of this bit, byte, nibble, word and kilobyte and then you can give an example like this. Say for uh, nibble you can say it is of 4 bits and 2 nibbles will make it 1 byte. So you can write it like this. Uh, byte is a group of 8 bits. So you can also say 2 nibbles will combine to make a byte and similarly you can also explain what is a word like this. So a word is nothing but 2 bytes. You can say 16 bits. So this is an easy way if you remember this table you can answer all of this easily. And kilobytes you all know that it's uh, it's 1024 bytes. So similarly just for your information uh, you can also mention these sizes or it is for your reference. And now how primary memory is different from secondary memory and they have also asked us to explain it. So just not uh, writing the differences is not enough. You should also explain them. So firstly what you have to do is explain what is primary memory and explain what is secondary memory. After giving the explanation you can write a difference table and list down the differences between them. So here you can see I have uh, explained them briefly like what is a primary memory and I have given some examples also and similarly for the secondary memory as well. And then I have listed down the difference. So you can follow the same thing so that it will fetch you 7 marks. Now the next question is what are enumeration variables? How are they declared? What are the advantages of using them in a program? So this question consists of three things here. One is to say what are the enumeration variables. Then we need to say how, how do we declare them. Then we need to write the advantages of them. Uh, you can uh, write the description of what is an enumeration which is nothing but enum. Then you can write how we declare or define them. And then you can give a small example of a code and explain them. So here you can see I have just uh, written an example of example of enum week in which we will have all these uh, items inside them and each of these items will be assigned with the numerical values. So by default it will start with 0 and it will go on like this. You can also give your own numbers. So this is what enum means. You can briefly explain them and give a small example to your explanation which will add on to the weightage of your answer. The next question is to explain the various rules for framing the identifier's name. And they have also asked to give an example for valid and invalid identifier's name. So first of all you need to explain the rules that we use to form the identifier's name. You can begin with saying what are identifiers and then you can uh, list down the rules that we need to follow and just give the examples for valid and invalid identifiers. As you can see here I have given some 
three to four examples of how to write the identifier's name and these are all the valid names and these are invalid so while writing the invalid identifier's name you can specify why it is inv invalid so that will give more weightage to your answer so for example here the special character you cannot use so th that is one of the rule so you can say this is invalid because it has a special character and this is a keyword you cannot use keywords as a name of ID as identifiers so that is one more uh, invalid case and here you can see namespace one since it is having space it is invalid so likewise you can use the same rules and give the reasons for this invalid identifiers so this will fetch you eight marks and then we uh, have a question which asks us to write a C program to calculate area of a circle. So this is a very easy question. You can easily score six marks in this. And uh, the detailed explanation on this uh, program, uh, you can watch out this video for the detailed explanation. So here is a simple small program to this. Just that you need to calculate the area of the circle. You already know the formula to calculate it. Just put it here and print the result. Now in the next question they are asking how similar and different while and for loops are and they have asked us to give an example. So here you have to keep in mind it's not only the difference between while and for loops but they have also asked to mention the similarities between that. So here we have only one similarity between these two loops that is you can say uh, the uh, one similarity between while and for loop is that they both are entry control loops. That means to enter into for while loop or for loop, first it will check for the condition. That means there is a condition, there will be a condition only after satisfying the condition we can enter the loop. That is what it means when, when we say entry control loops. So this is the one similarity that we have between these two. And you can list down the differences between them later and give an example to each of them like this, a small example. So that will be fetching you 8 marks. So if you want to know the detailed explanation on this while loop and for loop, you can visit this video over here. Now here's a question which asks to write a C program to print numbers from M to N. And they have said that M N should be greater than M. That means M will be smaller and N will be greater. So you can assume that as M is the lower limit, N is the upper limit. So what you can do is just write a program and ask for the user to enter the limits that is lower and upper limits and then scan them into m and n respectively because here they have clearly mentioned n should be greater than m so n will be our higher limit and m will be our lower limit so just take those inputs and then using the for loop just print the numbers between these two for example if it is 10 and 20 then we have to print the numbers from 10 to 20 so using a for loop you can just do that. So this will easily get you 6 marks. Now demonstrate the working of break and continue statement with a suitable example. So we all know the working of break and continue. Just give a few, uh, just give few points on what is break and what is continue and where we use them. And with a small example, you can explain the flow of the program when we use both of this. For example, if you are using break, the flow will be like this. It will break out from the loop and it will execute the next statement. It will come out of the loop and execute the next statement. That is what break means. Suppose if we have continue, then what happens? It will ignore all the statements in, in the loop and it will go back to the beginning again. So it, will, it won't go to the other statements after this loop. What it do, it will again go back to the loop and start executing the loop. So that is what continue does. So the flow is going back to the loop and then it will come again in the same flow. But in break what happens, it will not go back to the loop uh, beginning. Instead it will come out of the loop and execute the statement. So this you can explain easily with the small example like this. If you wish to know the detailed explanation on this, you can visit this. So here's a question that asks you to write a C program to plot Pascal's triangle. When you write the program, make sure you also write the expected output like this. Because since they have asked for Pascal's triangle, you can write how this Pascal's triangle looked like once this program is executed. For the detailed explanation on this Pascal's triangle program, uh, there will be a video which I will be mentioning in the description. You can go through that video. 
Now the next question is to compare if else with switch statement. So this is an easy question that you can just list down the comparison between if else and switch statement. So uh, here you can see I have mentioned some of the differences or uh, I can say the comparison between these two uh, between these two if else and switch statement. So for the detailed explanation again you can visit these links that I have provided here. Now another question which asks us to list down all the format specifiers that we use and also they have asked us to explain any two of them. So this is easy you can just mention some of the commonly used uh, format specifiers like this we have a lot of them and then explain any two that uh, find easy. So here we have percentage D for decimal integer single digit decimal integer then percentage C then E G we have F for floating we have H for short integer and we have I for decimal hexadecimal octal integers. So likewise you can mention few of them and explain any two of these uh, format specifiers. Now the next question we have here is how 2D array is represented in memory explain with a suitable example. So since this question is for 8 marks you begin with explaining what is a 2 dimensional array how do we declare this 2 dimensional array and you can also explain the compile time and runtime initialization of 2 dimensional array. So for the detailed explanation you can visit this link and uh, one more important thing that you need to write here for this question is they have asked for the memory representation. So make sure you write this without miss. So this is the important thing that is asked in this question how the memory allocation is done for the array elements for the two dimensional array elements. So you can take an example of this array like we have a four columned three rows array here and how this will be arranged in memory. So this is how it will be arranged and you also can mention this is the allocation in row major order. So no need to write both of them you can just mention row major order and then write the representation of the memory like this. So this will fetch you 8 marks. Now there is one more question on arrays. So they have, they have asked for an array declared as an int. 50 compute the address of 35 a of 35 that means they want to know the address of 35th array element and they've also given the base address as 1000 and they've given word sizes too. So this is a very simple question just make sure you remember this formula. So the formula is a equals to x plus b i. So what is x b and i here a is what you're going to compute that means you're going to compute the address of the given position. So that is that is a now x is the base address. So we all know the base address in the question they have given as 1000. Now i is the position of the array element which you are going to find the address of. So we need to find the address of 35th element. So i is 35 and n is 50. So what is 50? 50 is the size of the array. So that is n. So we don't need this n just to check for this condition we need n. In the formula we just have x plus b i. Now what is b? b is the size. So size they have given as 2. So just substitute all these values in the formula you will get the answer. So the answer that we have arrived here at is 1070. So this is a very simple uh, question you can easily score 2 marks in this. Now we have a question on strings. So they have asked what are strings. Write a C program to swap two strings. So firstly we need to mention what are strings. So give some two to three points on what are strings. Explain them briefly and then uh, write a program which will swap two strings. So this is also a simple program. You need to have two strings and one more string. Supp say this is a temporary string. In order to swap we need one more temporary string. So that is this S3. So we have S1, S2 which we will be swapping with each other and S3 we are just using to swap them. So how uh, we need to enter string 1, enter string 2, scan them into S1, S2. We all know that we need to use gets for this. And then uh, before swapping you can just print the strings. And then now you can use the string copy function to swap the strings. So you can see here first we are putting the S1 value into S3 into a temporary string. Now to S1 we are putting the value of S2. So now S2 is having S1. Now S2 should have S1 right. So what we do for S2 
S one's value we have already stored it in S three. Just take it and put it into S two. So that's what that's what we are doing here using string copy. First we are putting S one's value in S three, storing it there temporarily. Now S one will be holding S two value, so we are copying S two into S one. Now with using string copy we are again copying S three into S two. So this will swap S one and S two. Now after swapping you can just print them. So this is a simple program. You can also mention what is the expected output out of this, like this. So this will fetch you ten marks. Now here is a question on bubble sort. So they have asked us to write a program to implement bubble sort technique in ascending order and trace the program for the following input. So make sure you write the program with these inputs only. Okay? Just generically writing is not going to fetch you all ten marks. Make sure that you use the same input that they have given in the question. So here is the program for that. Let's go through this. For the detailed explanation, you can visit this video here. Now we have a question which asks us to mention the various operations that we can perform on strings. So we need to write down all the built-in functions, and they have asked to explain any two of them. So after listing down all the string uh, inbuilt functions. Just say, for example, string length. So it will find out the length of the string. So like this, you can just write one line explanation to all of this uh, inbuilt functions, and then any two of this you can just take and explain them. So here I have taken string copy and string compare. Both of them I have explained with a small example. So you can refer this and explain the same, or you can take any of the two from here and explain them with a small code snippet example. So that will fetch you easy eight marks. Uh, here is a small question that they have asked on strings. So they have asked to mention the purpose of a null character in strings. So why do we use null character? You can just write some three points on this. You can say what is a null character and why do we use them? How it is used in strings? So we all know that to terminate a character string, we will use null character. That means if the compiler encounters a null character in a character string, that that means it is the end of that string. So you can just write these points like this, and it will fetch you two marks. Now here's a question which asks to demonstrate the use of C user-defined functions with a suitable example. So to this question, you can just briefly say what is a C user-defined functions, and then give examples for this using a program. You can also write uh, what are the different types of user-defined functions we have. This will add some weightage to your answer. And uh, to give an example of code, you can easily take any example of your wish and write it because everywhere we will be having one or the other user-defined functions. So you can take any example and explain this, and you can easily get ten marks to this question. This is a very easy question that you can answer. Just say uh, what is user-defined functions. And you can just mention the different types of user-defined function and write a small program to explain it. Now, what is recursion? Write a program to compute a factorial using recursion. So here you can see we need to say what is recursion. Just in a few lines, you can explain what is recursion, and then you you have to write a C program using recursion to find the factorial. So here, this is a small program as you can see here. So if you wish to know the detailed explanation of how to write a recursive function for finding this factorial, you can visit this link and learn it. Now here's a question: write the differences between call by value and call by reference using suitable examples. So in questions wherever they have asked for examples, make sure you write a small code snippet example to them. That will get you full marks on that question. So here they have asked for the differences. So before writing differences, you need to write explanation on each of this. So you can explain what is call by value and what is call by reference. So while explaining this, you can also give a small example like this for each of this. So you know what is a call by value and what is call by reference. So briefly, if I have to say, call by value is nothing but suppose say you have two uh, variables n one and n two. Now if you are calling a function and passing the values. You're you're not passing this variable itself. You're just passing the value inside this. So when you're doing that, any modification that you do inside the function, it won't change anything to this actual variables. So only here the values will be changed. But if you are using call by reference method, 
that means you are directly giving the address of this variable so whatever the actions or modifications that you do in the function it will directly modify the value in this address that means the values here will be modified but here only the value the copy of the value will be given not the actual address of this variables so the variables value will remain same but here the variables value will be altered by the function so this is the major difference between this call by value and call by reference and after explaining them you can put a table and write the differences between them so here's a question to define what is a function and list the various advantages of function so you you need to write what is a function so you can say functions are independent program models that are designed to carry out a particular task and also you can write the two types of functions that we have one is library functions that is built in functions and one more is user defined functions if you wish you can give small examples to each of them like what are the functions F uh, for example what are the built in functions that we have like printf scanf and what are the user defined functions suppose to add two numbers we will be writing a function called add so that will be a user defined functions and then you can write the advantages of <coughs> <coughs> and then you can write the advantages of using functions in c program like this so this will fetch you 5 marks now here's a question to write the differences between formal and actual parameters so easily you can write down the differences between actual parameters and formal pa parameters which i have listed down here so this will give you 5 marks how does a structure differ from an array so while answering this question you can uh, explain what is array and structure uh, and then list down the differences between them so for a detailed explanation on arrays and structures you can watch this video which linked here now here's a program that they have asked in the question observe what all data that they want you to be using so they have asked you to define a structure and they say that the name of the structure should be dob so make sure you are giving the same name in your program and it will be consisting of three variable members that is dd mm and yy which is of type integer so make sure you follow the same thing that they have given in the question and uh, they say to develop a c program that would read values to this individual members that is dd mm yy and then display the date in this format so this is the format they are expecting mm dd mm slash dd slash yy form so for this so this is the program first you need to declare the structure your struct dob and then you have to mention these members dd mm yy now this dob is created so this is the command here and then in the main function you have to create an object for this structure so for this dob what is the object first we have an outer structure here just observe here there are two structures this is a structure inside a structure so the outer structure is student you can create an object to this and then ask to enter the name then uh, these are all just to make sure that the program looks meaningful okay now scan f and take that into name so here you can see in the structure student we have name roll number and date of birth and the state of birth is again a structure that has dd mm and yy so this is how you can get the values inside them and then while printing that you make sure you give this format okay that is what it's been done here so first we are printing uh, name roll number and then dd mm yy or you can uh, whatever the format they have asked for just make sure you write it in the same format so here is a question that uh, they have given a code snippet and they are expecting you to give the result of this program so for you to understand i have just run this in the compiler and this is what it gives it gives 20 and 20 so just make sure that you, whatever the code that they give you analyze that okay you run through the program and see what output you will get so then easily you can mention the expected result out of this now here is a question which asked to write the difference between structure and union and give an example so wherever you see given example make sure you give a code snippet example so here is a structure uh, you, you can easily differentiate them with these uh, terms say you can differentiate based on these values like keyword size memory value altering 
accessing the members initialization of the members so based on these parameters you can differentiate these structures and union and write down like this so this will be more neat and it will fetch you a good marks and make sure you give small example for each of this so this is an example like how to write the structure and how to write the union you can also write a small program using this and that will add the weightage to your answer now what is a pointer discuss pointer arithmetic with suitable c code so to this question first what is a pointer so you need to write what is a pointer it is a variable that holds the address of another variable so pointer is a variable that holds the address so that you can write and now for pointer arithmetic you can just write two lines on what it, what it is and then give this example that i have uh, written here so i have taken two examples of uh, one is of type integer and one more is of type float so for integer if you are uh, making this increment operation for example so what happens the pointer will be of two bytes say uh, okay because it is of type integer now if you are incrementing this pointer it will be incrementing based on the data type of this so here is the data type integer so when you are incrementing this it will be incremented by two bytes because size of the integer will be two bytes and again for float what happens if you are incrementing uh, the pointer of type float so if you say increment this i pointer now it will be incremented by 4 bytes because size of the float is 4 so this is how we can explain the pointer arithmetic with a suitable code narrate the purpose of various c language preprocessor directives so to this question you can uh, write all the preprocessor directives that have that we have in c and write the syntax for each of them and then describe all of the preprocessor directives and also make sure that you give a small example for all of this so you can give an example of macro you can give an example of this hash include wherever you are using and also one or two examples on this conditional compilation and an example for the other directives that we have for example so that will fetch you complete seven marks thank you all